Hi, this is James Rousseau, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Coiling Solution, where we look to empower you through awareness and actionable insights. If you have ever considered being an entrepreneur, but perhaps didn't have the risk appetite for it, or if you're a leader of people and have thought, how do I truly tap into the brilliance of the people within my corporation? Well, this is an episode for you. On this episode, I link up with Maria Racho, organizational effectiveness practice lead at the Allstate Corporation, who is also the founder of Entrepreneurs at Allstate. We discuss what entrepreneurs are and what they do, how I got all started at Allstate with just five folks three years ago and has blossomed to 450 entrepreneurs three years later. And how you might implement the same within your organization, whether you're the person who wants to be an entrepreneur or are a leader inside that organization. So sit back, buckle up, because we're about to link up with Maria Racho. Okay, we're here for another edition of the CoreLink Solution. I am proud to be here with Maria Racho. Uh, I've known Maria for a while, but she is an organizational effectiveness consultant at the Allstate Corporation. She's also the co-founder and president of Entrepreneurs at Allstate. So welcome, Maria. Thank you, James. Thank you for being here. And I know the audience will be uh, very pleased to hear some of the things you have to share. You guys are doing some innovative things. So why don't you take a few minutes and introduce yourself a little bit? As you mentioned, I am one of the practice leads of our organizational effectiveness group at Allstate. That is an internal consulting group that supports leaders around strategic change. Um, and my passion job is the, well, I'm very passionate about org effectiveness, but I'm also passionate about um, entrepreneurship. And it's something that I've uh, discovered over the years. And I can share with that a little bit about how that came about. Um, but Entrepreneurs at Allstate is an employee resource group. It's a grassroots initiative that came about with a number of us that just uh, resonated with this uh, thought of a corporate entrepreneur, someone with that that entrepreneurial spirit that saw possibilities that maybe most others didn't see, and also wanted to roll up their sleeves and bring those ideas to life. Mm-hmm. Now, I think this is so cool because the term uh, entrepreneur is um, not a widely understood term. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for some it could be new. So let's not take for granted that people understand what it is. So at its very core, what is an entrepreneur? Yeah, so I like to use the example of maybe by day um, I'm an accountant, but I see a possibility or um, an opportunity in sales that's not in my wheelhouse, but as a as a consumer and as someone that understands the business to some extent, I see a possibility of something that can be a differentiator for us. And so I bring that idea forward. And because I'm so passionate about the idea, I am willing to put in some extra time, extra effort to help bring that idea to life. So it's really, it's a corporate entrepreneur. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So inside the walls of the company, beyond my job, so to speak. Yeah. Something I see I want to do, I may be passionate about. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So how did you, you know, talk about the road to kind of bringing this to life and and, uh, getting to being the president of Entrepreneurs at Allstate? Yeah. So um, it actually started, and this is why this is, this experience is really cool for me because it's kind of (laughs) coming full circle. Uh, James, with the work that I was doing for you, you were one of the, my clients, a leader at Allstate at that time. And you were describing this environment that you wanted to create with your with your team, um, being you know an early startup that we were experimenting with, and that you, as you described the um, being able to test and learn, like move fast, uh, uh, be agile. I used a lot of the terms that you had um, shared to go and do some research. And at this time, Lean Startup was just starting to make some headway. And there was an HBR article that was about how Lean Startup was going to change everything. And so, you know, at that time when I shared that with you, you were like, there's something here. Can you go and do some more research? And we wrote that white paper for you on um, how Lean Startup was being applied in big business. And that's where I found entrepreneurship. You know, there was a, there's a strong connection about this, uh, like, human-centered development that's feedback-driven and iterative and, like, very empowering for people to help test and bring ideas forward. And, um, and so there was a strong connection. Like, with entrepreneurs in different companies, they were using Lean Startup as, like, a foundational methodology. Wow. 
That's pretty cool. And what you know, what's what's interesting is I remember at that time, at least I think I remember. Man, I'm getting older. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is we thought uh, we went outside, found an agency, want to do some work with Fahrenheit mm-hmm. 360. I think the agency was mm-hmm. so on and so forth, and uh, a lot of things we want to do iteratively. But you found since then uh, an even better thing, which is a whole community of folks out there who are doing this, right? So, right. so how how big is this concept? So so what happened was there were a few of us that had gone to um, uh, a weekend kind of boot camp, a Lean Startup Machine boot camp. We went and were applying some of these skills. We were there mixed in with entrepreneurs and learning so much. And we came back and individually we tried to, we tried to um, share those ideas and those methods. And uh, we, we got limited uh, uptake on it. You know, it, it seemed a little out there for a lot of folks. And, um, and so we kept coming back together and recharging our batteries when we would get together and, uh, and re-inspire each other and then go back and try to influence again. And we came to a point where we just said, this needs to be uh, a community it needs to be an employee resource group. And we decided to put ourselves through the lean startup methodology and kind of uh, lay out that canvas, and we said we had to really come to terms with what if it's what if we don't find other people there? It's just us five, <laughs> and we had to come to terms with saying, well, then maybe then it's just a small club, <laughs> and maybe there's not a community out there. But when we went and tested, and we described this to people, there were definitely people that were eager to be a part of a community like this and be around like-minded individuals. So we that gave us evidence that there was a critical mass out there. Uh, and we also bumped into folks that were just like, well, this is dumb. People should just do their jobs. <laughs> and we realized it's not everyone gets it. Just like not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, not everyone you know gets that as well. And so we decided to work through word of mouth to just uh, say, James, you're an entrepreneur. You know others that are out there. Just bring them to the, to the, to the meetups, or bring them to the, you know, the the lunches that we have, and it's grown to over 450 members now, and uh, continues to grow. 450 members. Uh, employees across inside the enterprise of, inside of Allstate. Inside of Allstate. All mm-hmm. Okay, so how does this practically work? So yeah. you're, let's stay with your example. I'm I'm an accountant. Mm-hmm. I see opportunities inside of sales. Mm -hmm. I want to help do something in sales. Mm -hmm. Take me from there. How's it work? Yeah. So, so right now we have a couple resources. We try to offer resources, access, and skills for people to be able to bring their ideas to life. We have a few things internally, like a wiki and um, different platforms where people can pull information and kind of self serve. Uh, we also have two initiatives that we do. One is um, a startup challenge and one is an internal shark tank. And so people have those channels to be able to bring ideas forward. Um, the shark tank is more open and, and it's, uh, there's not a specific focus or business challenge. It's just new, new revenue generating opportunities. The, Startup challenge is more education based because we know that this is a new, um, a newer skill set for most folks or a lot for a lot of folks, and so we want to be able to offer them the opportunity to build those skills and practice those skills, and so they can bring their ideas through those different channels, um, or if they are working on it on their own, they they can also reach out to our IA group to ask for some coaching and guidance. So we try to help in those different ways. So this is kind of self-directed on their own time. Yeah. So this doesn't have to be, uh, and don't take this question the wrong way, because I'm not, I'm not inspiring a yeah. revolt. I'm just trying to understand. This doesn't have to be necessarily within their development plan with their manager, per se. This is, I want to do this on my lunchtime. Right. I want to do this after my work hours. Yeah. So they come to the resources that are provided by entrepreneurs at Allstate. Mm-hmm. They can look through. Um, self-directed resources, and mm-hmm. then they can say, hey, I want to come be a part of the startup challenge. Yeah. I want to be a part of the Shark Tank, pitch my ideas, and then things could, could take shape or not from there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Okay. Got yeah, it. Got yeah. it. 450 folks involved. 450 folks involved. And this is three years old now? This is almost three years. Almost In three September, years old. it'll be officially three years. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Let me ask you this. When you kind of look and compare and contrast as you've helped organizations and leaders kind of assess challenges with mm-hmm. moving their organizations forward and 
things, everything from, you know, leaders to come to you <laughs> like me or whoever, <laughs> whether you're starting a new business or you have a business you feel may have kind of flatlined in terms of um, growing and, and such and, and some of the challenges, how I motivate my team, so on and so forth. Where does this fit? Do you feel like this this is helping leaders move their business forward? Do you feel like not really it's not related? How mm-hmm. do you how do you think about it? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because I am feeling like there's more and more convergence uh, as time goes by. So before it used to be very separate, but there is a sense like this there's something here about empowerment and something here about um, really tapping into the brilliance across the organization. And um we have, I, I don't know if you were still with the company right when we in, introduced the leadership principles. No. Um, and mm-hmm. that is something that uh, the Tom really advocates about people being able to lead from every seat. Got it. And so for me, that is validation for me about entrepreneurship yeah. because, you know, entrepreneurship is just equipping people with the resources and information that they need to be able to bring forward, you know, educated, well thought of ideas. And, you know, and and sometimes it's just learning the know how of how do I test those ideas out? How do I validate them so I could really bring an evidence based solution forward? Yeah, I I was there now think about it. I think it was right, probably right before I transitioned. Um, Your point is the skills that they can pick up on the entrepreneur side Mm -hmm. that previously would have been looked at as private personal development Mm -hmm. can now be used inside the walls of the company. Definitely. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And so, and so we try to position our challenges um, to also help them uh, help, help from multiple angles, help with the company and being able to innovate and help them to be able to bring their passions and ideas forward. Um, So our challenges aren't just like open challenges and, you know, you bring your your new favorite summer sausage, you know, um, idea to the table, (laughs) but we try to um, help them with providing some parameters, you know, around it being something that will help benefit the business uh, as well as they can they can tap into their individual passions and experiences maybe that they're not leveraging in their day job. Exactly. So when you think about some of the folks listening, our audience is, is pretty diverse of people who are different stages of their career, yeah. um, younger in their career, or maybe um, at that pivot point. A lot of times, uh, as you recall, um, um, one of the things I talk about a lot is um, a lot of times people feel like their day job and their passion are mutually exclusive. They yeah. can't come together, right? Yeah. And I, I like to fight against that notion because I don't believe I do that too. has to be true. But let's just let's just for the sake of argument say there are plenty of people on the phone or, or, or listening to this uh, podcast who believe it still has to be true. And so they're listening, trying to figure out how to transition. Let's say this is a prime opportunity to say, well, no, not necessarily. You can think about how to make entrepreneurship real inside your company. Based on what you've gone through and your experiences, what would you tell them are the, the the ways to start that conversation with their leadership team, their management team, et cetera? What advice would you impart? One thing that I do try to encourage with both my board members, because this is all volunteer run as well. Like, so all these challenges, all of that um, are, vol- are are also entrepreneurs doing this on top of their day job, including myself. And from the experiences that I've had with with change and working with you know communities like this, what has to be most important is your day job. So definitely, it's the that day job has to come first. You have to do really well with that. You you can demonstrate that this is coming not at a as, at a cost, but as a, a supplement. You know, this is this. You can demonstrate how you are going above and beyond. You know, because sometimes we can easily get carried away, you know, with our passion and then forget that like our our day job is <laughs> that's what's kind of, um, you know, helping us take care of our families and, and all of that. I think that's one of the most important things as well with um, with entrepreneurship. It may not be your job right now, but if you really, you know, come forward with a knockout idea that the company sees the potential of and that they want to invest in, that could be your job of the future. So I think that's the future of entrepreneurship and just knowing where the future of work is going and the gig economy and you know what millennials are expecting in the workforce. I think entrepreneurship can help actually position companies mm-hmm. and individuals to you know, to um, do their best Absolutely. and to have, have a, a win-win work relationship. 
Have you seen, and it may be too early because uh, just under three years in, any results or success stories yet that you can speak to, or is it too early? Yeah, I'd say it's still it's still early now. But what I can say in the last Spark Tank, we had three ideas that were selected to be funded. Got it. Which was we were hoping for one, <laughs> you know, but like we also we also got feedback from you know one of our sponsors to say the ideas are in a different place from even last year. So that's giving us some evidence that people are developing their skills right. uh, as well as that it's uh, there's more visibility to people that have those ideas that are out there. Yeah, and there was a team that was selected that last year, you know, they didn't make it and they kind of like left a little defeated and, you know, and we feel bad for that, you know, of course, uh, but they... They pulled it together. They took all that feedback in, and they came came back fighting. So when the idea gets funded, the folks who submitted the idea get a chance now to go yeah, execute. Yes, nice. yes, and uh, and and execute to take it to the next step. Right. So it's still being, you know, they're still kind of testing, but they have the sponsorship and funding to right. evaluate it further. Got it. Yeah. So again, as a organizational effectiveness person. Mm -hmm. I know you just came back from a conference. Yeah. Can you maybe spend a minute or two about the conference? Sure. Yeah. I just came back from the International Entrepreneurship Conference. It's now called uh, Innovators, something like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's a, I still call it the Entrepreneurship Conference. And this is a conference that's been going on for about five years now. And it's been happening in Europe for a number of years. And it just came to the U.S. about three years ago. And this is, they, they, it's a small, more um, intimate setting, usually about like 100 participants that are, are there, mostly from different corporations, uh, different functions. There are folks that are running entrepreneur programs, folks that are in business, business development, in sales, in, you know, in an innovation function. But it's usually at this conference more of people that are rolling up their sleeves and doing things in their company and um, and not just setting up programs, but actually, you know, executing on ideas. Some of the more interesting ones, there's a gentleman who um, came up with Tide Spin um, was there and he kind of talked about about uh, his initiative, something that's using, you know, their their some of their core capabilities, but not It's not their core capability to have now these laundry services, you know, a new company uh, or a new like market that he's he's generated. So really interesting, a lot of potential. Amazing. So this community is just growing. It's growing. It's international. I'd say it's probably taking off more in Europe and Asia Mm -hmm. faster than it is in the U.S. Do you find in some cases it's partially uh, for some done out of necessity? With some of the incoming talent, I mean, later generations are a lot more uh, transient, mm. uh, a lot mm-hmm. more, um, I don't want to say demanding, mm-hmm. um, assertive mm-hmm. in terms of wanting to get towards their passion. I'm just mm-hmm. curious, have you seen any, um, have you heard any anything relative to corporations in terms of we need to do this in order mm-hmm. to kind of satisfy the appetite of some of the incoming talent pool. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that. Okay. I mean, I would say, I would say, with us and mm-hmm. with an IAA, that definitely there's a higher population of of millennials, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of high performers as well mm. that are being drawn to this. Gotcha. And um, it's not who we were. That wasn't like a target. Uh, market or right. target audience that we were aiming towards, but a year in, we went and kind of did an analysis of our members, and that's who is gravitating towards this. But it's also interesting because the ones, you know, we're also seeing a pattern of like long term all staters that are participating and um, and also having high commitment to the ideas that they're bringing forward. There's longer term all staters that are just like are sticking with their idea. If the idea didn't make, you know, a first round, they continue to like work towards it and they're going to try the the next opportunity. And um, so we're seeing kind of just interesting patterns. But I would say definitely with millennials, there is something with the entrepreneurship that is very appealing to them. There's also this what's called the circle of young entrepreneurs um, that were started by two gentlemen at Barclays and has grown to over 7,000 members across the globe. I think they have like over 
40 um, different companies, 20 countries across the globe of, uh, of these grassroots um, communities that are popping up. And they're really focused on the social entrepreneurship part of it. Well, well, let me ask you this and kind of as we kind of wrap up two two questions. One yeah. is I feel like this is like old days. So I can't help but ask you yeah. this. because, Like I used to always ask you uh, these kind of questions. Maria was always a good sounding board for me. Just generally speaking, thematically um, right now, I mean, we're, we're in such pivotal times and, and the workforce is changing so, mm-hmm. so dramatically. What are some of the key themes you're seeing people challenge with? I think about skills and I think about personal development and leadership development. What are some of the things that you're seeing folks challenge with in terms of, you know, what they can do to show up better and more equipped in the workforce uh, as you see it from what you're seeing in your eyes? I mean, you're serving an organization with 60,000 employees, yeah. uh, Fortune 50 company. Any themes you're seeing nowadays? Yeah. I, um, so one, the first thing that came to mind is, uh, is collaboration is a necessity. Mm. It's not just a nice to have. It's a necessity these days. Things are so complex. There's, um, there's, there's a talk that I heard at the conference about exponential organizations. Um, so that's that might be an interesting book for you if you're you know if you're interested just about the rapid rate of change, and it's like it's indescribable, especially with the um, the digitization and and right now there's so many leading edge breakthroughs and innovations that are happening that. People are uh, are combining and uh, and exploring that um, that it's it's hard to even know hmm. five ten years down the road what innovation looks like you know what to plan for what to even what to be thinking about or prepare for so collaboration is a necessity because no one person has the answers these days. Not even a collective will have all the answers, but you'll at least know, you know, more and, you know, and uh, be better positioned to be responsive for the future. And so for positional leaders, that's a paradigm shift from, you know, legacy um, ways of leading, right, where you're expected to be the one with the answer. You are the one who sets the direction. Um, what I am coaching leaders on right now is you do have a, a vantage point that no one else sees. So have a point of view of, of just enough, just enough of the, the direction or the, the strategy or the um, approach that you're going to take. And then open it up to your folks to be able to um, contribute to it or beat it up a little from their vantage point. So Hmm. what I find with empowerment is that people think that it's either one or the other. It's Hmm. like you are, uh, you are as the leader setting all the directions, telling people everything that they need to do, or you're completely hands off. And there's a gray space that needs to be figured out. And for leaders to be effective, they need to they need to understand how to work and navigate those boundaries. I love that uh, point of view, just enough, and then opening up the conversation. Mm-hmm. That's great. So let me ask you this: as we uh, in closing, if you had a chance to go back and give the twenty year old you a piece of advice, what would that advice be? So if I think about the twenty year old me, um, a book that has um, influenced me this past year is Adam Grant's Give and Take. In Give and Take, he talks about, uh, he's very research oriented, and he talks about the research he's done with um, with what he calls givers, takers, and matchers. Mm. Have you read this? No, before? not yet. Givers, takers, and matchers. And um, when the thing that he asks is, who do you think is most successful in a corporation? Givers, takers, or matchers? So who, who would you say, Givers. James? Givers? Yeah, well, I did not. I didn't think that. I thought probably takers or matchers. And it is actually givers. And what he, sa- what he found was that givers were both the least successful and the most successful. Mm. And what differentiated them um, was how much they put themselves on their list and how, and so there are givers that, you know, he used a term like doormat givers that Mm -hmm. like give so much of themselves that then they never, they don't have enough 
for them for themselves, or they feel burned out, or they feel um, uh, resentful, because, you know, maybe they look back on their life, and all they've been doing is just giving to everyone else. But they're the givers that give, but they're just as ambitious as the takers and matchers. Right. And that allows them to give more. And what I realized for a big part of my my life, that I've been kind of that doormat giver. And, uh, and so I would tell that 20 year old self of mine was that it's great to give. And I love that, you know, about myself. And I need to put myself on my list. I kind of cheated because I just read a book <laughs> from a friend <laughs> yeah. of mine, uh, Billy Dexter. Uh, his book is called <laughs> How to Make Your Net Work. And Billy will be on uh, an upcoming podcast. But one of his things is uh, about networking. And one of his first rules of networking, and I've watched Billy do this for years, is um, in networking, give first. But it's a strategic intent that it comes full circle, right? So it's not haphazard, right? It's giving first. And it's, you know, just philosophically for me, I've always been a people first um, leader, right? Um, that, that's just I my, that. my yeah. thought process, <laughs> right? And I just believe it comes full circle. So, um, so yeah. So, all right. So last question. I mean it this time. I mean it. Okay. Okay. So um, one of the things I always like to do for this audience, again, for to empower folks and uh, help them do better. um, Who else do you know, do you think we should know? Meaning myself and the folks who uh, listen to this podcast, who else should we have on this program? So I think, I think, I think Gifford Pinshaw, the third, who is the person who coined the term entrepreneur, um, just because I think he has seen the ebbs and flows of this, and he has just such a diverse background and experience to tap into. He also um, can help give insights on um, how to make effective sponsors, because sponsors are really critical in an entrepreneur ecosystem, and also um, how to navigate the corporate immune system. You've already made that connection, so you're ahead of the game. I have, right. yeah. I'd also say Adam Grant. I mean, his, I've been a big fan of his books lately and um, just great thought leader. If you can make that connection, that'd be great. No. <laughs> I know. I'm friends with him on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, anything else you want to share before we wrap up? Um, nope. I think that's it. That's great. Thank, Thank you, so you much for, for taking the time to come out. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Nice to see you too. Thank you for linking up with me for another episode of The Coiling Solution. A few important notes before you leave. As it relates to this specific episode, as entrepreneurship is still evolving, many of the policies and practices surrounding it are likely to be as well. Should you pursue this opportunity, please be sure to be diligent in understanding all of the policies as it relates to the ownership of IP and any produced works to be sure there are no surprises. Overall, nothing has changed. If you find this podcast to be of value, please subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or whatever your service of choice, you will see a subscribe button. Please use it. You will then be notified each time a new episode is available. Secondly, please rate the podcast. And thirdly, please review the podcast. Again, no matter which service provider, you can rate and review the podcast. And that is important to us. Lastly, this program is about empowering you through awareness and actionable insights in the areas of personal leadership development, entrepreneurship, and social justice with a particular focus on education. As you listen to the show, you may have questions, hear things that are new to you, terminology you may not have heard before, all of which is good. We are here to serve. Go to the website, thecorelinksolution.com, and right below the show notes, you'll see a comment section. You can ask questions, mention challenges you face in the areas I mentioned, and even tell me what other guests you'd love to hear from. We'd love your feedback. And you can also do the same on our Facebook group. Thank you so much for listening. Link up with you next time.